Hello, Mr. Montalvo here. Um, today we're going to be uh, taking a look at the Harlem Renaissance. Uh, this is part of uh, Unit 4, Lesson 2, taking a look at the years following uh, World War I, uh, Day 3, uh, the Harlem Renaissance. And our objective for today is to explore the changes in American culture after World War I, including an examination of the Harlem Renaissance and other changes that would take place in New York City and throughout the United States at the time. Now, the 1920s are often called the Roaring Twenties because it was a decade noted uh, for changing cultural values. Born in New Orleans, uh, jazz combined West African rhythms um, and two of the most prominent known as the mother and the father of jazz, Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald were bright, young African-American musicians who really helped to create and define this genre of music. In the 1920s, large numbers of African-American musicians, artists, and writers settled in Harlem uh, in a period known as the Harlem Renaissance. The works of Duke Ellington and Langston Hughes reflected the achievements of the Harlem Renaissance. Now we have to understand that the, the, what triggers this, this renaissance uh, in New York City and, and throughout um, the northern states is the Great Migration. Uh, we have floods or droves of African Americans who are leaving the South, the Jim Crow South, to escape segregation and seek equality. And they're doing so not only in um, the economic sector, but also the political sector, and here in, in society as well. Now the Harlem Renaissance can be best described as a period of great achievement by young black artists who celebrated their African and their American heritage. As a result of the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s, African American writers and musicians received increased recognition uh, with the promotion of pride and African now, Langston Hughes was the best known poet of the Harlem Renaissance, first publishing his poem, The Negro Speaks of Rivers. Um, other writers as well, um, Ernest Hemingway uh, becomes a very prominent writer um, on the world stage, um, producing a novel called A Farewell to Arms um, about a young man's uh, disgust for war, making those connections to World War I. The literary works of Langston Hughes, Sinclair Lewis, John Steinbeck demonstrated that literature often reflects the times in which it is created. Now here we have an excerpt, um, a, a poem uh, by Langston Hughes, a one-way ticket. I'm fed up with Jim Crow laws, people who are cruel and afraid, who lynch and run, who are scared of me and me of them, I pick up my life and I take it away on a one-way ticket, gone up north, gone out west, gone. Now, the author states that he has gone. Um, why? Well, he's, he's trying to escape the racial discrimination in the Jim Crow. Um, gone up north, gone up west, uh, places where African Americans can um, not only leave segregation, but also um, break the chains of share, the sharecropping system uh, and, and, and establish something of their own. Now, the historical analysis that was connected to um, the previous uh, day, day two, uh, which was the homework for day two, uh, we're gonna take a look here um, uh, for, from these um, photographs that are produced. And I want you to think of, uh, while we're looking through these photographs, how might have uh, James, uh, Van der Zee, uh, how his photographs contribute to a feeling of pride for African American culture in the 1900s. So let's look through some of these photographs. We have a lady with the fur jacket, 1936. Uh, lady in evening attire, 1922. It's a wedding day in Harlem, 1925. couple in raccoon coats, which were pretty expensive, in an automobile, 1932. Now, these photographs, taking a look at them, I want you to think of what impact this might have um, on feelings of pride in African-American culture 
um, they're for the time images that we that people would not be used to seeing African Americans in, and so this helps to shift that ideology and promote further um, further equality, but also further pride um, in African Americans in the United States. Connected to today's lesson, day three, is an article um, entitled The Harlem Renaissance. And what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to take a look at that and I try to identify the significance. So, ident after you've read the article, identify why is the event that's described in the article, The Harlem Renaissance, taught in schools today? Um, what are the lasting lessons that we can learn from studying this event? and then support that with um, at least two details from the text. And in closing, for our exit ticket, explain the changes in American culture after World War I. Think of what we've discussed today uh, and, and, and how that changed society immediately after World War I, but also what might be the long-lasting impacts in trying to make that connection to today, our society today, if possible. Uh, great seeing everyone again. Hope to see you soon. Take care.